All right. Hey, eighth graders. So I'm videoing this from my house right now. So let's go ahead and get into this. Um, so today we're going to start learning about like the phases of the moon. Uh, we're going to touch on like the earth. We've already done a lot on the earth. Um, but that section one reading that you guys have probably already done by now, it says first complete section one worksheet, allow them to use the earth science books on page 672 through 677. Um, so you guys should have already completed this or got really close. Um, I've allotted about 20 minutes to go ahead and do this. Um, so like I said, a lot of this should be fairly easy, especially this guy right here, uh, talking about the Northern and Southern hemispheres being in different seasons. Um, really pay attention to this last question here where it says, why don't we have the same exact measurement for the distance? Um, <clears throat> so you need to read into that and figure out what kind of orbit all planets follow, okay? And we'll talk more about gravity and how come planets don't have a perfect circular orbit. And you need to write down more than that. You have to be specific when you guys are telling me this stuff. So make sure you're using complete sentences, complete thoughts, and you're not skimping in, skimping out on any detail uh, on that. So anyways, that's right out of your reading just to get started off. Uh, then after that, um, Here's this PowerPoint, and we're going to go ahead and get into this. So as of right now, if you have not already, you guys should have this uh, fill-in notes right here. These fill-in notes right here. Okay. So it starts it's talking about lunar rotation, revolution, and these are just fill-in notes. That's all they are. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um. Okay, so the lunar rotation revolution, then we're going to go over the phases of the moon and stuff like that. Um, so the moon rotates on an axis and it circles the Earth. It rot its rotational period is the same as its period of revolution. This means that we only see one side of the moon, which is really weird to think about. Um, if you actually go to your, your um, book, it shows it puts a flag on the moon. And if you point that flag towards Earth, as it begins to rotate and revolve around Earth, with Earth, um, we only see that one side because it revolves at the same rate as it rotates, which is super weird. Um, unlike the sun and the stars, the moon does not produce its own light. Uh, it's, it is visible only by the sunlight that reflects it as the moon moves in its orbit around the Earth. We see different parts of the moon illuminated, and the moon appears to pass through a sequence of phases okay and you guys have known this forever and ever so we're going to kind of go through this fairly quickly um and the reason why some of it's um illuminated at other times it's not because only let's say a quarter of it like if the quarter moon a quarter of it's only illuminated no actually at any one time right half of the moon is always illuminated it's just that we can only see that sliver, you know, if we're looking at the, the waning crescent or the waxing crescent, that's all we can see of that half moon that's illuminated. If we see a full moon, now we're just seeing the broad side of that moon being illuminated. Okay, so this figure right here shows how the moon phases, uh, how they're visible from the Earth and they're related to the moon's orbital uh, position. So we see that over here we have the sun. So here's the new moon. So obviously if you're standing here on Earth and we're looking here at the moon, uh, half of the earth, the moon is illuminated, right? Just like the earth is. However, we can only see the dark side of it. Therefore, uh, it's the new moon and you cannot see the new moon, right? It is pitch black. Um, and then as we're able to start seeing it, as it begins to make its rotation around again, we're able to see the waxing crescent. Waxing means it's starting to grow. Uh, so the complete cycle of the lunar phases takes about 29 and a half days. This is about four weeks. Uh, the new moon occurs in the moon between earth and the sun and the side that faces the earth appears dark uh, a new moon sets in the west with the sun um, and if i'm going too fast you can go ahead uh, whoever the sub is can go ahead and just pause this at any time so everybody can kind of get caught up so in the days after the new moon the moon appears as a thin crescent uh, each night the crescent gets larger and this is known as a waxing, meaning it's growing. Okay, so once we finally, after the new moon, you can expect the moon to get lar uh, the illuminated, illuminated portion to get larger and larger and larger. Uh, this moon phase is known as the waxing crescent. 
All right, now we're at the first quarter. So while the moon is waxing, more of it is illuminated each night. So now we only see half of it. And again, um, still half of the moon is always being illuminated, but now we're able to see a quarter of that illumination, right? If I'm looking at this picture right here on the other side, right, is the other quarter that's illuminated. We just can't see it. Um, about one week after the new moon, the crescent has grown until you're able to see half the side of the moon that reflects the, uh, sorry, that faces the earth. This moon phase is known as the first quarter. And then after the first quarter, the moon continues to wax, meaning it grows so that it becomes three quarters of it is facing, is illuminated. So now we're seeing more and more and more of it. Uh, we call this the waxing gibbous. Then finally, halfway through this cycle, we start seeing um, the moon is opposite side of earth. So it is, there's nothing between earth and the sun because the moon is now on the exact opposite side of it, the furthest away from the sun that it gets. Um, and it is the face that's fully illuminated is now facing us and we're able to see this full moon and that's how we get a really, really bright night. Um, actually the moon is, the surface is about like asphalt supposedly. Uh, so it absorb, it absorbs a lot of radiation, reflects a lot of it too. Um, but it's actually very dark. So even though during a full moon, it's really bright out during the night, um, the moon itself is a very dark substance and that doesn't honestly reflect a whole bunch of light. So that's just to show how much energy that the sun always puts out. So this moon is, this phase is known as the full moon. It rises as the sun sets and sets as the sun rises. So the second half of the cycle of the lunar phases is the reverse as the first half. So after the first full moon, uh, the illumination of the moon begins to decrease or wane, means it goes away. So the moon will wane through the waning gibbous, which is the phase or the third or last quarter. So if you notice, we had our waxing gibbous up here and we have our waning gibbous. So both of these guys stand for three quarters. Okay, so this is how you can remember those guys is waxing means it's growing, waning means it's going away, but then gibbous, right? Gibbous means three quarter, gibbous means three quarter. Uh, and then we come over here to third quarter. So we have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, right? Um, and eventually it goes back to this new moon and we see our waning crescent. We have our waxing crescent, which is that second phase if we count the new moon as our first phase the waxing crescent is that second phase and then it ends with the waning crescent okay so we have some of these ellipse, ellipse eclipses i'm sorry so a lunar eclipse occurs when the full moon moves through the shadow that's cast by the earth so we should cast a shadow right um and then this moon will pass behind us every so often and so the lunar eclipse is also known as the blood moon due to its red in color. And that's because of the, the light. So as light passes through our atmosphere and it's kind of distorted and it's refracted and reflected, then that's what shines on the moon. And that's why we get that red color. So as the moon moves into the shadow, we gradually see it darken. The sunlight that passes through Earth's atmosphere has the shorter wavelengths. Uh, removed, it's scattered, and then the light passes through and reaches the moon is longer wavelengths, meaning it's red. So a lunar eclipse can last for a few hours. Um, here's something really interesting. So this shows why um, eclipses this shows why eclipses uh, don't happen super often. So you might expect that there would be a lunar eclipse every month uh, during the full moon. But the reason why, so however, the moon does not orbit the Earth at the same plane as the Earth orbits the sun. So you can see that we have a slight angle here. It's uh, 5.14 degrees. So the moon's orbit is at an incline that's at about 5 degrees. Thus, when the moon is full, it does not necessarily pass through the Earth's shadow. There are usually only one to two lunar eclipses a year. Okay, and so you guys can kind of look at this and study it. Um, so the, the sun would be over here, and then as we're casting the shadow, so the shadow doesn't actually cast perfectly back here where we have two parallel lines right here and a parallel line right here, and then everything in here is shadow. No, that's not how it goes. Um, the, the shadow of Earth actually starts here, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, where over here it does, down here it does the same thing until... Uh, that shadow will eventually disappear if I get farther and farther behind the, the, the earth.
Okay. And this is the same reason, like during a new moon, like how come we don't always get a solar eclipse? Um, and it's the same thing. So it, uh, as Earth rotates like this, right, on this plane around the sun, the moon is slightly like this, and it kind of goes like this. So it'll pass in and out of the Earth's rotational plane. Okay. And so that's all of the notes that I have for you guys, and that's really just for the phases of the moon. And so what I have you guys doing next, give me one second here. And so what I have you guys doing next, oh, I'm sorry. And so we had this last one. My computer's kind of going weird on me right now. Um, come on. Okay. And so the solar eclipse occurs when a new moon passes directly between the Earth and the sun, and the shadow of the moon falls over Earth's surface. And so uh, obviously during a lunar eclipse, that's when the moon passes into the Earth's shadow. Well, the Earth is a lot bigger than the moon, so the shadow of Earth actually can cover the entire moon. Where when the moon passes between Earth and the sun, then there's only a small dot, um, right, that is cast on Earth. So when Earth, when we see a solar eclipse, only a very small portion of Earth actually sees that solar eclipse. Um, <clears throat> most of us see the partial eclipse. Um, a lot of the times the solar eclipse will pass like over the ocean. So nobody will really be able to see it. It has to pass over obviously where people are to be able to see it like land. Um, so there are generally one, two solar eclipses each year and several more partial eclipses. Okay. So then next what's going to happen here. Um, you guys have this little activity and you guys will be done. All right. So. Nope, that's not it. It is phases of the moon student activity. So this is kind of cut out. Um, so you guys should have three pages. So this page that you start on and this page right here should be front and back. And then this page and you should have these two pages right here. This one and this one should be on two separate pages because what you're going to do is you're actually going to cut these guys out. Okay. And so what's going to happen here, and, and it gives you the model of what it already is going to look like. So this right here says you're going to use this metal brad. Um, these are for like these brass things that are used for envelopes. Um, instead, I'm just going to have you guys use these little push pins. Let's see if I can make my window a little bigger. Okay. So you guys are going to use these. All it is is a thumbtack. Okay. And so this is right here is just going to be a pivoting point. And so you're going to stick the thumbtack up through the arm and up through the sun. And then the sun and that arm will be able to rotate freely, right? And then you're going to do the same thing here for the earth. And then you're going to have another arm that attaches to the earth, to the moon. And so you'll have three thumbtacks where you see those metal brads, those brass metal brads. Um, and so you're going to use this in order to complete uh, these, these two, um, pages of worksheet. Okay. And so this first one says, and it gives you an example or sorry, it gives you a model of the solar, the lunar phases. And so it says Sarah and Jimmy love Halloween. They can't wait to dress up for scary costumes and they tell ghost stories. What they want the most is a full moon on the night of October 31st. They remember having a full moon on July 4th because it wasn't totally dark for the fireworks. Using what you know about the length of the moon phases, will there be a full moon on October 31st? Explain your answer. Okay. So you guys got to remember back on the PowerPoint that we were looking at earlier, how often did we see a new moon or how often did this cycle, how long did it take for the cycle? So it says the complete cycle of lunar phases takes 29.5 days. Okay, so knowing that, you should be able to figure out um, on October 31st for Halloween, are they going to have a full moon? And so you're going to need to get a calendar out and uh, see if that will work out and explain that to me. Okay. So then after that, you're going to go ahead and make sure you're writing nice, complete sentences, explaining that all. And then with this... Uh, this cutout that you just got done cutting out and piecing together, you're now going to go ahead and use that to explain and show uh, in the blank circle, draw the moon phase. So you're going to actually color in the moon phase. So maybe a quarter of it's going to be colored in. 
maybe half of it's going to be colored in, depending on, right? So you're looking at the moon where it is in relation to the sun and the earth. And so you're going to take your model that you just made right here and you put together and you're going to put it in the same position as these pictures. Okay. And you're going to say, well, all right, well, I know the sun's rays are coming from here. My moon is right here, but then the earth is over here. Okay. So can I see any of the illuminated surface of the moon? No. Okay. And so what phase of the moon must that be? So first off, I'll go ahead and and color in that moon because I, I'll color it in all the way because it's a new moon if I can't see the illuminated side. Um, and then I know uh, I know what position to put my model in. I know that it's a new moon and I know that I can't see any of the illuminated surface, okay? And that's what you're gonna do for the rest of these. Uh, once you're done with that, you can go ahead and put your name on this um, and turn it in as well as if you guys get this done, you can go ahead and put your name on this and you can go ahead and get that turned in. Now, what do you guys do with the model? Well, uh, so I know what you eighth graders are like, and I would like you guys to make sure you return all of these thumbtacks to the sub before you guys leave, okay? So that means every person has three, and every person needs to turn back in three thumbtacks, okay? Don't take these with you and start stabbing people in the hallway in other classes, that's bad, all right? But other than that, uh, that's what you guys have to do on, for Thursday. And then Thursday, I have another lesson for you guys. And then I will be back on Monday. Okay? So we'll see you guys then.